Hello everyone, my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be making the Lens of Truth from the Legend of Zelda game franchise. Now as shown in the video, this was broken up into three parts due to a faulty part on my printer. For those who are interested, it was a failed extruder which I didn't end up replacing until after I had printed this entire model. Currently though, Everything is working as designed, and I'm yet to experience the same issue with the replacement part. Gluing this prop together wasn't that big of a deal either because A, this is going to be a wall prop, and B, I was getting ready to heat up an X-Acto knife with a butane torch just to cut it up anyway, in a different orientation of course. The reason for this is that certain parts of this prop will be resin casted, and in order to create a mold for them, they had to be isolated and then cleaned up first. The spiked ends and the lens are the parts that will be casted while the magnifying glass frame will remain 3D printed. As always, I am using an air drying spot putty to fill in layer lines and sanding with 320 grit sandpaper followed by a single coat of Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 sandable primer. Then I filled any remaining voids with more putty and continued this process until I was completely happy with the end result. Now I would like to take a moment to mention that I have linked all the resources that were used on this project in the description below. Putties, resins, dyes, silicones, STL software, etc. For every video, I always want to do this because if anybody wants to try to replicate this or utilize certain techniques that I may have used, it really does start with material selection, which I'm more than happy to annotate for you. Also, if I happen to miss any details in the description or my commentary throughout this video, reach out to me in the comment section below or just message me and I'll do my best to try and answer your questions. On that note, any feedback helps me understand what should be included in future videos and what I should leave out. So inadvertently, by commenting or simply reaching out, you're helping me create overall better content, and who doesn't want better content? By this point in the video, two of my models should be hot glued into the inside of an old iPhone box and ready for silicone. The silicone that I'm using for this model is Smooth-On Umu 30, which is a two-part silicone, and like many Smooth-On products, the mixing ratio for this is going to be one to one. After stirring parts A and B together, I pour the silicone from as high of a point as possible in order to reduce the amount of air bubbles since I don't have a vacuum chamber yet. After the silicone is poured, the cure time for this is roughly about 24 hours or so. It's best to store this in some place where it's warm to prevent a stunted curing process, especially if you live in a colder climate or if you're doing this in your garage during winter. The second mold that is being poured is a basic flat cylindrical shape that I modeled to sit inside of the magnifying glass frame. Also on a side note, I do apologize for not including footage on how this was modeled, but for those who were interested, it's simply just cardboard layered together in combination with Bondo and Spot Putty. I was going to print a model, but I ran out of filament at the time and I was too impatient to wait for more to arrive at my house. Even though the mold ended up imperfect because of this, I was just happy to be able to move on to the next step. Later on in the video, you'll notice that it did create a little bit of extra work for me. Luckily for me though, I didn't mind the additional sanding. I've learned to accept that sanding is a necessary part of this hobby, and it should be welcomed with open arms. Nah, I'm just kidding. That shit sucks. But I've been doing this for so long that I've gotten used to the monotony of sanding, and I really don't dread it as much as I used to. After the recently mentioned 24 hours, it's time to demold my models and prepare my mold for resin casting. Alumalite makes a product that is called Amazing Clear Cast to part clear coating and casting resin, which is what I chose to use for this project. Now, just like the silicone from earlier in the video, the mixing ratio for this product is one to one. So if you pour 15 milliliters of part A, then you're going to need to mix it with 15 milliliters of part B. Alumalite also produces translucent dyes that can be applied to this product in order to add tinting. The idea for this cast is to have the center of the eye of the lens to be red 
while the rest of the lens has a slight purple tint to it. After demolding any of these parts, it's time for more sanding, and I want to try to outline this process for you as best as I can. Also, I would like to note that I used whatever I had laying around the house as I'm not the best planner, so here it goes. I started with 320 grit sandpaper to remove any imperfections that may have been created through casting. This may be flash, or maybe my models had imperfections in them when I poured my silicone. Air bubbles can also be prevalent when pouring your silicone molds as well, which can cause issues during casting later. Then I moved on to 800 grit, which was a little bit too dramatic of a jump for me, and I would have preferred to use something between 500 or 600 grit first. Moving on from there, I began wet sanding, which started at 1000 grit sandpaper, followed by 1500 grit, and then finally I stopped at 2000 grit sandpaper. The final step in this process involves polishing the wet sanded parts with a product called Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. And I do have to say, based on the footage and what I saw in person, it is the ultimate compound. This product is primarily used in automotive applications when restoring paint finishes, but I've also seen the same product applied to plastics as well, like headlight restores. And naturally, I just thought it was a good fit for this type of resin. Now switching gears for a moment, to achieve the faint purple tinted resin that I used for the lens, I first mixed 30 milliliters of resin with a single drop of Alumilite translucent blue dye. Then separately, I already had 30 milliliters of red tinted resin ready to go. By using the same stir from the blue container, I was able to add an incremental amount of blue to this mixture, as too much blue would give the resin a more opaque appearance. It was honestly crazy how heavily I had to dilute this stuff. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned how my lens mold was imperfect and that it created extra work for me. Now you actually get to witness the impact of those imperfections and see just how much sanding I actually had to do. Check this shit out. You'll notice that in the close-up, the open face side of this model is the closest thing to flat that can be seen up to this point. But, notice that the opposite side is very rounded, and if that isn't enough of an indication, wait just a couple seconds and then watch the time lapse. You'll notice how much dust I created while sanding it to be flat. It was an absolute f***ing mess. But like I said earlier, let's all welcome this necessary part of crafting with open arms and a song in our hearts, because despite the monotony of this task, the end result is absolutely, arguably, worth all of the pain and heartache. I was surprised though with how well this came out, given that I had made this entire lens from scratch. But since everything turned out like I had hoped and dreamed, it was time to set the lens inside of the frame. To do this, I first made sure that I was happy with the placement of the lens, because once it's glued into place, that's it. Like, there's no going back at all. So I used Loctite Super Glue with gel control because there's no drippiness or runniness to the consistency of that product. And then to speed things up, I used a Super Glue Accelerator that basically causes a heat spike that makes the glue cure in about five to 10 seconds. This product is truly worth the investment if you want faster results. Super Glue Accelerator can be found at most craft stores, but I listed an online source where it can be purchased as well. After the lens was tacked into place, I wanted some kind of border to put around the lens to conceal the glue marks, so I took some scrap PLA and used it as a facade. I cut it into the appropriate length, and then I glued it into place where the glue marks were. If anybody's going to attempt using PLA the way that I'm using it in this clip, the main thing to remember is that less is more. You use too much glue, and then you try to set the PLA on top of the glue, the glue's actually going to seep out of the sides of the PLA, and you'll be defeating the purpose of using it as a facade. In this case, though, I've got to say that I was definitely happy with how well it worked out to give it a very clean look. Moving on to the final stages of this project, it was time to spray my first coat of paint, which was a satin black spray paint. 
This is going to give us a nice base coat to work with when adding a metallic finish later on in the video. The next product that I used is absolutely messy and I recommend putting down plastic before using this and not making the same mistake that I did by not protecting my work surface. Instead of using a metallic finish spray paint, I chose to go with a graphite powder. To apply this, you can take a cotton ball and simply rub this onto whatever you're making and it should give it a casted metal appearance. Now, as seen in the footage, it definitely doesn't disappoint. Like, it gave off a casted metal appearance and I was absolutely happy with it. Now this is the part where I thought it would look cool if I violently slammed down a can of spray paint onto the counter as if it were a part of a Mike's Hard Lemonade commercial. So yeah, Duplicolor though. Duplicolor Metal Cast is the name of the product that I'm using in this clip and it's most likely going to be found at any auto parts store or online. The reason for that is simply because it's marketed as a high temp engine enamel as opposed to just being a regular kind of spray paint. So it's on the pricier side, but it's definitely worth the investment if you know very little about airbrushing or simply don't own an airbrush, which would be both in my case. After it dried completely, I taped up the handle on my prop and I added a little bit of gold spray paint. Finally, the remaining steps involved cleaning up the remaining resin casted parts which entailed the same sandpaper order followed by buffing like before. And this brings me to my final topic of interest which is this. With as much time and effort that goes into making these videos, I just wanted to express my appreciation to anyone so far that has given me the time of day to even watch my videos, let alone like, comment, or even subscribe to my channel. That's the kind of support that motivates me to do this in my spare time, as opposed to reading, playing video games, or watching movies. So for that, with much gratitude, all I want to say is thank you. Thank you for making it all worth it. So, here's the final slow motion 360 degree shot of my Lens of Truth from The Legend of Zelda. I hope everyone enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you next time. Peace.